Okay, so I'm here today on this beautiful beach in Hong Kong and I want to talk about three-dimensional cellular automata. So here's a set of objects created by three-dimensional cellular automata. Basically, these are just very, very simple computational rules that can grow some amazing structures. And so I've spent a fair amount of time just playing around with these 3D cellular automata and then 3D printing the different shapes that can get created. So you can see here that we've got quite an amazing array of different kinds of shapes. We've got things like this that look sort of like balls but with lots of complexity and holes and things like that. We have kind of cube shaped things like this and we have lots of other interesting kinds of objects as well. Like take this thing for example, all these different blocks around the inside and a big hole in the middle. Or this thing here that seems to have lots of sort of chambers. Here's one of my favorite examples. This one seems to have lots of kind of arms uh, which kind of fold to make these sort of loops and it has a lot of symmetry to it as well. Actually the, uh, the 3D printing doesn't really do the object justice. For example if this was 3D printed accurately you'd be able to see right through the middle of this. So almost all of these objects were created by a very very similar process basically just starting with a single cell and then updating it uh, with some rules which just depend on the number of cells around one. So for example, like if there are three cells that are on around you now, turn off or turn on or whatever. Very, very simple rules just to do with counting like that. And um, that's the reason why most of these structures have, this, have all this symmetry to them. Okay, so let's have a look at how this complex artifact was actually generated. Let's have a look at the simple process that was used to generate this complex structure. Okay, so what we have here is a totalistic cellular automata. And we're just starting with one active cell here in the middle. And we're going to keep updating it according to the rules. Now the rules are that every time step, um, the cells are going to change. And the rules are that a cell is going to become active precisely when there are either 1, 2, 3, 8, or 11 active cells around it. Now, when I say around it, what I mean is within the kind of 3 by 3 by 3 box, which is centered upon that cell. So, the rules are pretty simple. It's just to do with counting how many active cells there are around you and then turning on or off according to that. But as you see here, when we run this rule for 11 time steps, we get this remarkably complicated and interesting pattern. So if we have a look at this kind of final structure that we get after evolving for 11 time steps, there's a lot of detail which is hidden from us. And in fact, this is not a connected structure. And so what we want to do next, because we want to get something that we can 3D print, is we want to kind of blow away a lot of the disconnected pieces. So essentially we're just going to um, find the largest connected piece of this structure and we're going to take that separately. And so when one just takes the largest connected component of that pattern, one's left with this lovely structure here. It's kind of like a ball um, with these square holes and there's a lot of detail inside which you can't see very well as well. Um, and this is the final product that we ended up 3D printing to get that lovely model. Now, not all of these systems were generated by such simple rules. There's a couple of them here that were generated by something a little bit more complicated. For example, this one here. The way that this one was made was to start not with one cell, but with six cells stacked up and then we evolved it for 10 time steps and we took this structure off. So that's why this structure is elongated. 
but notice that it still has this kind of fourfold symmetry. And here's some other fancy shapes that we created. For example, this one here that looks rather like a castle. This one was generated um, in a similar way to these kind of things, just uh, by growing the thing in a, in a sort of symmetric way, but then we chopped the thing in half and stretched it out, and that makes it into a quite a nice sort of pen holder or something. And here's another shape which was generated in a similar way. And I'm quite interested to think about what kinds of applications we could have for these kind of objects. For example, this thing here. This was generated by a similar process to this one here. But I chopped it in half, and I think it makes rather a nice sort of candle holder or something like that. Also, I made this kind of bowl here by a very similar process. Basically, the idea is just to replace the cubes with balls. So what I actually did here was that I grew out this sort of big complicated pattern of um, cellular automata shape and then I just sort of only kept the parts which were a certain distance away from the middle. Cut the thing in half and I got this nice little bowl shape here. So it's almost like carpentry, you know. You can just take this big kind of array of complexity that you get and just carve away at it and keep the things that you want and use them for different things just like a carpenter would cut away at a piece of wood to make various objects.